hey, 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 happy day 695 of What's She Up To Now. Sharon Hornell's from here, also known as Pajama Grandma. Drinking lemon water for my coffee. <laughs> coffee throat today. I've been hanging out with my granddaughter. And last week she started coughing. She pretty much had a cough all week. And of course, by Saturday, yesterday, I had it as well. Uh, the cloggy knows the cough. Ah, just in time for the holidays, yay! So, thinking about <clears throat> this morning, the expression, I can't. And wondering, is it just another way of saying, I'm scared or I'm afraid to do something? And as much as I hate to admit it, and I think it's hard to admit, I think that whenever I say I can't, or I won't, or I don't want to do something, it's not that I don't have the ability to, which can of course means the ability to do something. It's because I don't want to make a choice. I don't want to make a decision. I'm afraid of responsibility for the outcome of something. And we can use all kinds of excuses to say that we can't do something. We're busy. We don't have enough time. We don't have enough money. We don't have enough of whatever resource we might be discussing in order to participate in something. But do we not? Or is it because we're afraid to? Because the truth is, <clears throat> there's unlimited resources on this planet, right? If we need or want to do something, we find a way to make it happen. It's not about having them in our hand. It's about can we get control of the resources we need to do whatever it is that we want. So I was just pondering that today and wondering, when I say I can't, every time I say I can't, is it because I'm afraid of something? Is it because I'm afraid of making a decision, making a choice? And I'm going to say, painful confession, it absolutely positively is, at least in my case. Love to know what you think about this. Do you think that when we say we can't do something, there's an element of fear associated with that or not? Share in the comments below because I would really love to know. And then I know if my thinking is just a little skewed or if I'm looking at it in a weird way. <clears throat> Thanks to my dad, the word can't, I try to not have that in my vocabulary. Of course, we say that in sentences and talking and writing, but when I catch myself saying I can't, a, a flag goes off and I immediately stop and say, okay, why am I saying I can't do something? Is it that I can't do it or is it that it's not a priority for me and I'm not going to commit to it? And then I'd rather be clearer in my communication to say, this is not something that I'm going to devote the time and energy and effort to to make it happen and it's usually not something that I want to do anyway because if I want to do it I'm never gonna say I can't do it but the fastest easiest quickest ways to get me to do something is to tell me or forbid me from doing it tell me I can't do something and it's as good as done there's a lot of us that way we're kind of rebellious in our own little minds we have to push against things that don't feel right for us so curious what do you think of can't share in the comments below um, flotsam and jetsam was the topic of supersize your business and my just general Facebook live conversation today and I loved it because I had no idea what flotsam and jetsam was before I read this idiom and then shared this idiom and then the thoughts about how that affects our lives and our businesses <clears throat> um, so I'd be curious if you know what flotsam and jetsam is or if I'm the only one that doesn't it's been around since the 1500s so I feel a little silly that I had not heard them or didn't really know what those words meant until and what the idiom meant until I read about it and I'm a huge example of a flotsam and jetsam <laughs> collector so that's why I thought it was funny that I didn't know what those were <coughs> today was day 89 of the 90 day BP challenge I love challenges I, I absolutely positively love challenges and obstacles and problems and, and finding solutions for them. So 90 day challenges I just learned from another seven day challenge. They're way too long because people can't do them. But I guess the people that I like to work with like challenges and like to make commitments to themselves that they really will change and get the results they want. So I'm sure there's people out there that are like me that like 30 and 60 and 90 day challenges and those are the people that I serve, not the people that are like, I can't even stick to a five day challenge. So. You know, what are you going to do for me next? They're not going to be the people that I ever work with. Uh, so the challenge today was about how do you feel about your ability to overcome challenges, to meet challenges, obstacles, and things that pop up in our life? Because no matter where you are in your life, there's always going to be obstacles and challenges and problems to solve. We always like to think, at least when we're younger, that, oh, when I find the love of my life, I'll be happy. When I make a billion dollars, I'll be happy and I won't have any problems. No, instead of having 
$50,000 a year or $100,000 a year problems, you now have million dollar a year problems, right? The, the problems never go away. The obstacles and the challenges never go away. They just change as we change and grow. So I think it's important that we do a gut check and say, how confident are you now with the process of how to handle challenges and problems? Because like anything else, it is a process. You can break handling challenges and problems and obstacles down to a five or six step process, just like anything else. Do one, two, three, four, five, six, and you've got a process for handling challenges. So no matter how big the challenge is, no matter how traumatic or how small, you can use the same process to deal with them confidently and efficiently and effectively. <clears throat> and I'm all about that. Uh, so VP challenge, supersize your business. Happy Every Day was about invitations and invitations that you receive um, and how you receive them. And we can be invited to things in all different ways. So that's a quick rundown on what I'm working on right now. Not telling you what I'm working on next because I've already got the next thing in the works, but I will squeak it and leak it and share it when the time is right, which is which is fast and quickly approaching as we approach the new year. Have an amazing day. If I can help you anyway, hit me up in the comments below or uh, you know, Sharon Horn Elstrom, hyphenated, uh, <coughs> pajama grandma, G-R-A-M-M-A. -M -M -A. I'm hoping you know how to spell pajama. Uh, you can find me on, on most social media platforms or you can email me. If you need my email, ask in the comments below. That's it. Have an amazing day. I will, of course, be with you tomorrow with another update on what I'm doing as I transition from the brick and mortar world and the corporate world of business to the online world of business and, and why I'm doing that. And, you know, the ups, the downs, the good, the bad, the ugly, the dilemmas, the questions that come up, the I can't make a decision and choose what tight niche I'm going to go after and people I'm going to serve because I might be missing out on other other groups that I could serve and why that is the biggest mistake you can make when you're creating an online presence. That's it. See you tomorrow. Bye.